<coughs> Hello greetings, greetings from the outer world. How are you doing? How are you doing? No, seriously, I'm an alien. Uh, I have a proof for this because uh, when I came to this country, America, <laughs> I still have my green card from when I was only one year old and I came to this country called the called United States of uh, America, I believe. Uh, it says the resident alien. A few days ago, <laughs> It's just so fucking amazing, right? You, know, you just no. This is quite a revolution, man. Um, <laughs> uh, by the way, today is uh, June eighth. It's about almost eleven thirty at night. I'm actually in North Carolina, and I hate when they call Carolina because it just sounds so fucking, you know, shitty, man. It just sounds too. You know, I hate to say the word to create somebody might might find it offensive, but I'm sorry. This is the reality of it. But the image of a south wind really having no connotation, but being a dumbass really at the end of the day, um, it's really stupidly southern. That's really all I can say. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I prefer saying North Carolina or something like that. Yeah, that's another story. Um, it's funny, I never really plan my videos or anything that I want to talk about it, but it's just interesting. I have to say, I guess, thank God, the second I start starting my video somehow, Amazing enough, it just uh, amazingly enough somehow it just pours out my heart the way I really want to talk shit about the world that is surrounding me and is hurting me so bad, you know. Um, yeah, going back to the thing that I was telling you. So, no, I call myself alien because my traits, I'm just not from this world, and it just seems one way or another somehow so obvious. Um, so much that before I want to really alienate myself from people because I don't like their ways. seems like somehow in those subtle ways that I feel like <laughs> you know what I'm saying um, people don't like me for some strange reason um, gosh and uh, like today make this personal but um, no you know I actually um, lost a friend because merely I told her that I'm not interested to have sex with someone prior to getting married to them. And literally I told her that I'm not a dog, you know. And yeah, the next time I tried to call her, she just fucking, I think she just put me on a block list. Like every time I call her, just call gets dropped. That's just an example of it, you know. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Um, yeah, so, you know, I had to go really strong about this, but, um, you know, like just one girl, I think she was a girl on Facebook said that, you know, sex is a need, you know, I don't, I haven't, I'm a virgin, yeah, and I'm proud of it, um, but I Hundred percent feel need for it. I'm not gonna deny it. With a, I'm I'm straight with a woman, with a girl, female basically. But just like this girl said it, you know, it's okay and it's true that sex is a need, but you don't fucking put toilet in the middle of your dining room, right? <laughs> <coughs> Everything has a place and a timing to it. No. <coughs> <coughs> oh my God, it's really bad shit. I literally lost my voice even. Like, my voice was already so soft. But now, like, really, really people, I feel like they can't hear me. Like, really, absolutely not. Like, I mean, maybe before, somehow, maybe I sound like, my, made my sound really high pitched, and I'm how somebody would capture it. It's like, oh, I hear something. I don't know. It sounds like some kind of a chat or something is, you know, really mowing or something, but I can hear something, but now it's like really nobody can hear me. 
I hope it will go away. I think it's because of the cold, but... Anyways, going back to that whole alien thing. Um, how do you say that? Um, yeah, this very interesting. No, just, no, it blows the mind, you know. I call the immigration. I was, I'm trying to actually get my green card. The actual card. And uh, this time, every time I call, they ask for this number. They say... Well, not every time. Sometimes it's funny. They don't have a, a very, but every person is different. There's no apparently solid guideline. You know, somebody just re asks for your application receipt number. Somebody asks for your name. Somebody no. Give me your name, your alien number, your address. You know, like a lot more details. And at the end of the day, there are chances that he might, she, he or she might actually say, "Well, I could not find you. Sorry," <laughs> you know. But that's another story. No, she said, she said, sir, what is your alien number? Do you know your alien number? And now I was thinking, I was like, fucking shit, it blows your mind. You're in fucking America. Today, 2017, excuse me, 2018, still they call alien number. So that is in this country that talks about all about, you know, love for immigrants and humanity and... Yes, BS, 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 you're still an alien. And, well, yeah, once you become an American citizen all of a sudden, it's like you realize this is a new age of basically, you know, becoming accepted in a, in a, in a class society. It's not through changing your religion necessarily, you know, and accepting somebody's religion. The new religion is really realizing that whom you have to really... Uh, join forces with that's what fucking is you know yeah once you become an american citizen now you're not an alien anymore you're yeah you're a fucking american now you know <laughs> yeah, strong man with the plows you know strong pussy with a plow plow experience <laughs> yeah um and yeah now welcome to the human race uh we're glad that you realize that uh you know we need some uh, changes and modification yourself um so we're happy to uh, have you and uh, grant you an opportunity to become an american citizen thank you sir thank you no really no no i really appreciate you letting me become an american citizen yeah anyways that's another story um so moving on um what we want to say Gosh, it's been so long since I made my last video. Um, so much busy. So much of things been happening to me. <coughs> Yet still, I'm pretty much the same uh, place. <laughs> Shit, you know. Uh, you know. I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow, but I'm still in this world. Let's see, uh, what can I tell you about? Well, oh, this is one thing that I wanted to talk about. Yes, I didn't realize, you know, it's amazing, you know, you have to worship these people, man, these are very interesting, you know. You know, like, uh, funny is that this country, believe it or not, actually has almost all kinds of tribal or ethnic background, racial background in it from any country. You know, it's really as diverse as that really can get so far in our, you know, in our fucking era, the time that we are right now. I mean, U.S. is not the only one, like, perhaps, you know, the really advanced, con you know, relatively advanced countries in our time. It is perhaps, like, U.K., Canada, Australia, which seem... <coughs> <coughs> I know, it's a pure coincidence. And it has nothing to do as why these few English-speaking countries happen to be the uh, most well-to-do countries in the world. I know it has... It's just a pure coincidence, sir. What are you trying to say? Are you trying to say it's some kind of uh, old-ass Anglo 
brotherhood or brethren or hood or some shit. No, your fucking devil has nothing to do with that. Okay, we broke from the British about 300 years ago. We just feel like, you know what, we still need to keep them because at the end of the day, we still have closer ties to them versus other people. Oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Cool. <clears throat> Anyways, um, well, yeah, so these advanced countries, they have this shit. Um, but really, I think still America has the biggest mix. And this is the thing. Yet, in this country, when it comes to perhaps retaining your roots and your, how do you say that, what you are, really, really, you don't have that much room for exercising yourself. Not that you don't have the liberty, but from a different venue, they have managed to show this. You know, basically, simply said, let's talk about my own background. I think you know what I'm trying to say. I'm just giving it a little room and explaining this phenomena. No, it's just simply said. Because people don't need a reason for it, you know? People used to be resistant. <clears throat> and they felt the need to do whatever it, it, it they need to do. That is... You know, by being totally, uh, um, you know, going to hiding, cult-oriented, become, you know, violent themselves, do all kinds of crazy shit, whatever it took, you know, to preserve their heritage and, you know, their culture, their background, whatever that was. But my man, what is the new religion that this country, America, promises? Hey, my man, you know what? Enjoy yourself. This is a new religion. Girls, that is pussy, drinking, and money. That's a new religion that is abundant in this country, man. We need to, uh, this, this, I'm, I'm, I'm inviting you to join my religion. And I know you would be just matters of seconds of if we're, uh, you know, converting to it. Yes, that's what it is. You know, it works. It's, it's the best possible religion. It works, man. Yeah, it's America's a proof of it. <laughs> Enough that, you know, if you look at it, um, whether they're typically like your Indian or basically dark-skinned people. I'm not saying everybody's like that, but <clears throat> somehow whoever comes to this country within a generation or two, they fall into one few pre-established categories in this country. That is, they even become black, white, um, or like some mix of Hispanic basically and that's it there's no other identity here you know you're you're Asian you're Chinese you're Korean you're Mexican you this is what you come down to you're either white black or something like Hispanic <coughs> right <coughs> That's all you are. Other than that, there's nothing you share. But really just one thing. You all both have a love for one thing. Enjoying yourself. Pleasure and entertainment is high here. And nothing is wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just funny is that it makes you go like, why the rest of the world is so deprived of such a luxury, coincidentally enough, that everybody travels through and goes through a heck of a pain and suffering so they can just get their butt over to this shed hole here or there so they can have a better life and have that kind of uh, happiness. That is <clears throat> mainly also, you know, some kind of... Uh, Social security, social security I'm talking about, not 
social security and money now like like freedom of speech civil rights um, opportunity to grow financially that's right yeah yes these are the things but like I said it's pure coincidence right we America has nothing to do with the fact that the rest of the world is suffering you know but are you trying to say that they do something that they basically either support or induce that kind of uh, issues in those countries so people will end up leaving their countries and come to America so they can feed this chain of commands and chain of logistics in US so while they are offered some in incentives in return they can make tons of other people richer no <coughs> whatever but anyways um, no no it's very interesting you know cause uh, like from Iran I mean you know um, I mean Iran is not the only country but it's interesting uh, there's so many different ethnic groups in Iran and they all managed to keep their ways throughout centuries. That is, I'm talking about Armenians. This is amazing. I had Armenian classmates when I was in high school. <coughs> I never asked them if they were actually born in Iran and raised in Iran. I don't know that. I don't know that. All I know is just one thing. They could not speak Persian properly, <laughs> you know. That is how strong their whole Armenian root was, you know. Not only they they spoke their mother tongue so well, and they're so immersed in their own thing, but it was so far enough that they could not speak Persian properly. They would speak it with a massive, he heavy amount of accent. But guess what? We were going to high school together. They were meant to actually study Persian literature for like a part of it. Or also we studied Arabic or also, yes, English. Um, it was not the most rigorous uh, courses or so forth, but it was just, you know, maybe you call it formality, but that's what it was. And so did their fathers. You know, they have parents who had, yeah, they were, yeah, man, they were fucking living in Iran. It's not like every weekend they uh, catch a flight back from Armenia to Iran. No, there's no such a thing, okay? They have communities, enclaves within Iran that is only like purely Armenians or purely Assyrians or Christians or uh, so forth. Um, same as like Arabs, Turks. You know, so many, all these different variety of people. It's just amazing. <laughs> I think I made a recording about this <coughs> one time. You know, I actually used to work with a girl whose parents were actually Armenians from Iran. They were Iranian Armenian. And uh, I told her, you know, isn't that amazing? You call yourself an American citizen, but in Iran we call your people Armenian and they call themselves proudly Armenian and we like it that way. And we don't object that if, it, if, if they even feel allig allegiance to even Armenia or something, we don't feel uncomfortable about that. That is your thing. No problem. As long as you come in peace, that is perfectly fine. And my brother, that is the most beautiful thing ever. I love my country. You know, going back to the history, um, I did not live in time of this man, Cyrus, who, you know, came up with this whole thing that whenever he took a land, 
He said, you know what, I'm gonna let you keep your ways. I'm not gonna enslave you, I'm not gonna rape your women, I'm not gonna take away your children. You know, I'm not gonna tell you to change your religion to mine. I'm not gonna tell you to change your clothes. I'm not gonna tell you to abide my ways in terms of even governance. I will let you have your own king or queen even rule over you. Sounds very democratic and idealistic, right? I don't know how much, how far this was really in progress in all the nations that were part of the Persian Empire that back then. Um, but how you say that? It was enough that even after Islam, it was kept as the only way that the these newcomers and Persians still they, you know they they ruled by. It's not a new subject, so I don't want to go so deep into it. No, no. What I'm trying to say is that you know it's just that. Well, we say colorful is beautiful, and we believe that basically being you yourself is what you makes you bring the most to the table. You know, we are all in this together. Is there's one thing all the nations of empire had to, you know, supply manpower with the in the you know Persian um, army. It's amazing, isn't it? You're talking about so many years ago. Fucking 2,000 years ago. Somebody will just be a dude, you're nuts, man. What the fuck is wrong with you? Why are these all of a sudden, all these uh, people, they would just uh, conspire together and fucking, you know, one day rise against us. You're teaching them how to fight. You know, you're giving them all the... This is amazing, isn't it? <coughs> this is what happened, actually. No, this is a killer man it kills your brain you know anyway if you know i don't know how much you know about this but this is what happened when actually the americans they uh they pose a threat to the british because the british actually uh taught this new american-born colony col you know colonists or really british yet still how to fight when they went to the war with france inland in the the americas and that's how the americans they they learn how to fight and they learn how the british they fight so they were able to counter them quite well they knew their fighting techniques and so forth and you go back in time my lord what kind of a massive system you have to come up with to try to perhaps curb any possibility of such a mass rebellion you know but that's the thing they had not much reason to rebel you know what i'm saying that was the thing i mean i guess then still funny enough then you go to the time of current time where here you are here in america and although most people who perhaps are part of the American manpower, then again, <coughs> fall into very few goddamn categories that is primarily those from the unprivileged uh, social class, Hispanics, blacks, more like on a leading, um, basically, uh, position, more like whites here, there. I don't know, I've never been to the American Army, so I'm not going to say much about that. But here's what I'm trying to say. Yes, you have few minorities and here, there. Well, you have a lot of minorities, as a matter of fact. But you do have come up with a system to assure that nothing crazy is going to happen. I think. But, you know, here you are in a time and era where you have the technology to perhaps to one way or another to spy on people on on time real time perhaps and real time be able to you know to curb that but you going back in time anyways that's another thing <coughs> <coughs> these persians are very uh 
<coughs> there's a reason America doesn't want the Iranians to get rich. In 1979, they supported the Ayatollahs and brought them to power. Hey, man, for all you idiots out there, man, I just had a fucking a discussion with this dummy-ass dude who I think he was actually American. And he was telling me that, oh, what kind of evidence do you have that U.S. actually uh, supported the uh, Ayatollahs and the clergy to become in power? And I started trying to give him some ideas, and he goes, like, well, everything you're saying kind of sounds like a theory. You don't have a solid reason. I said, bro, what is your fucking reason that actually U.S. had nothing to do with this? Or allies, you know. Can you give me, please tell me, give me your you know, classified in facts and information that you have, you know. What you have in your fucking head is a pure theory as well. You just heard something on TV, all of a sudden, you know, for reasons we still don't know of, all of a sudden, some, what they claim were students, they break into the American embassy, and, uh, yeah, interesting enough, they managed to get in, and no was no resistance, nobody was protecting them. Then again, interesting enough, and, uh, yeah, it took him for 444 days exactly, 54, number 54, I believe this was the number, right? And this became the highlight of destruction of the relationship between U.S. and America. And further, not only destruction, but U.S. turning totally upside down against Iran, waging all kinds of sanctions against Iran. You're totally put out from the global market or out reaching out or being able to do anything with the <coughs> global market I mean for fucking love of God you know just like this man said it I was just watching a video on uh, from this um, dude we're not talking about goddamn you probably heard of this whole story how many planes in Iran have crashed civilian airplanes just because we're not able to buy parts you know, from new parts from the uh, goddamn airplane companies. You know, and everybody knows for the fact that, you know, there's no way fucking you can turn in some kind of a, you know, civil plane into a military plane or even parts of it. There's no way absolutely you can do this. If they wanted to do this, trust me, then. Iran would have been really good at the business of trying to freakishly build its own whole uh, <coughs> God, the fleet of a new... Uh, anyways, that's another step. But it's a story. It's a thing. We can't even... We are the world still, actually, at this moment, despite all the sanctions that... Yeah, that's the one thing that America doesn't apply any sanction to. When they come to buying our oil, they're very quick to buy our oil because... You know, if you don't know about this, region by region, every oil has a different grade into it, and you can get different kind of materials from it, and you know, um, basically derivatives from it that you cannot find from a very close by another vicinity. That is, the oil from Iran is very different from the oil from neighboring countries. That is, even Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Kuwait, or. I don't know, some parts of Dubai, but yeah, excuse me, so, um, you know, United Emirates, <coughs> you know, and those are very crucial and vital uh, components, you, you can't just let it go, funny, um, a few years ago, that's when they actually came up with the whole idea of totally boycotting the uh, Iranian oil and all these cocksuckers, they got together and joined America saying, yeah, okay, we're not going to buy oil from America. And it was just a matter of three days, basically, literally, that one by one they stepped back and started arguing that, well, you know, we need Iran and oil, and I'm sorry, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry, this one thing, we will let them die from hunger, but we need their oil, you know. It's no problem, we will do this, please, for you, for you, America, we do this, no problem, man. You're doing the boss, man, what the reason? But, but please, man, let us buy the oil, because we don't want to buy, buy, die from the hunger. But uh, no problem, we, we will make a deal with you. We will do what we can to make him die from hunger, but so technically you achieve what you want. You know, we're still with you. This will be time to help you, man, okay? But uh, let's please, man, please, we, we want the oil, man. This oil is very important, man, please. 
and yeah that whole thing was just really a formality moving on <coughs> so we're the world's largest one of the world's largest oil producers this moment <laughs> despite all this shit going on in the world but we can't afford we, we were not able to it's not that we can't afford they don't let us to buy parts for basically establishing refining capacity for gasoline so we have to import gasoline from outside which is very expensive that's where they have the leverage on us so they buy our cheap ass oil they will refine it and they will sell it 10 times more uh, and more expensive to us this is called a fucking american revolution man hey man fuck you people man how devil can you be for the love of god man you know this is gasoline for the love of god you know I mean, come on, man, you know, you know, how devil do you have to be, you know? Of course, America has nothing to do with Iran. <laughs> <coughs> Anyways. It's just funny, like, uh. No, man, man, I'll tell you the reason why. It's very simple. People can afford to basically not noticing these kind of things and walking off by it. It's a simple concept. I don't need that shit. It doesn't affect me. Just like this yesterday, I was sitting, I was joking, joking with this pussy, you know, I was saying, hey, you know, Trump is taking questions this afternoon. Are you going to call her and ask some questions? She looks at the TV and she's with her friend. They're quite silent. Yeah, it's so fucking rude and offensive you know and literally about 30 second pass and i was like you, you you understood what i said right and she nods her head so yeah i heard what you're saying you know well you know i try to stay out of politics you know and i just really tried to really act like you know there was nothing much to say anyways but the reality i wanted to tell you is that you know what i know why you want to stay out of politics because you're not a victim of American politics. You're either, at the end of the day, you're on the, the other side of the spectrum. Just like uh, something that I always say with the American old military. No, it's even me, I have to tell you. I have to tell you, it's this very simple concept. You know, <coughs> if I want to read something about some part of the glorious um, characters in Persian history that they were well pff, we like to justify their actions I guess yeah I know we're yes yeah that's what I'm trying to say we're very similar actually but uh, whenever we had the power to beat some nation up I feel very uh, identified with that person I feel so proud and strong when I read about that person's biography when I go online but whenever I feel about somebody else beating us up, all of a sudden it becomes quite of an agony and I have no interest to read about it. It's the same thing, you know. He, I'm so amazed by how military is so infused within this country. Because you don't know how it feels like having bombs drop on your head. You know, you never experienced that in land. You don't know how that feels like. Trust me, it happens a few times here, there, here in America. I know magic. Somehow people will actually get on the street. Yeah. Yeah. Not only fucking saying uh, slogans and protesting, but yeah, yeah. With all hold those fucking guns that you tell them that you're keeping them for, you know, dictatorship baloney. Yeah. You actually pull them out if you have to. And it's like, yo, nigga, you stop going to wars again, okay? No more wars, nobody, okay? Or we're gonna have to change the system one way or another. Yeah, it will happen. No, you know, everywhere you walk, you know, it's funny. Everywhere I go, I've never seen this anywhere. You know what I'm saying? I have never seen this anywhere. Whatever I go in America, more or less, somehow, I'll see a lot of modern time, you know, some kind of a military apparatus somewhere laying, you know, on a highway, on the road, you know. In some uh, corner of a neighborhood, you know, I'm like, dude, what the fuck is this shit? 
<coughs> you know? This is insane. Or you see some fucking psychopath driving around a actually a military hammer around. Or some shit. Yeah, dude. What? Does this remind you of when your mother was being killed by some American goddamn hammer running over her? Or your bro? Okay. Well, I feel good about it, you know? You know? Well, my people don't feel a bad, bad way because that was we were doing it to other people. Yeah, once you be on the other side, all magically some changes will happen, you know? Then you will stop feeling like every time you see a fucking tank laying sitting by the side of a highway, you start actually objecting to them. It's like, this is a piece of goddamn shit, man. Take that shit out of here, okay? We live in a civil world. We don't need that kind of crap around us, okay? We have enough military bases in this shit all within this country and around the world. We don't need any more of that. Okay, we don't need to see that much of that physically around us. That is despicable. Anyways, uh, I think uh, very soon this uh, video will stop because... Um, you know, I always use my phone to make these recordings and there's only a limited uh, capacity storage. So, uh, my man, you know, one thing I want to say, I know this whole thing is all meant to be, uh, for profit, but you know, uh, I love to say this, when you're running a government organization and you have uh, people waiting in line for maybe one hour or uh, 40 minutes, one hour, 20 minutes sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> when they have to call you please for the love of god have the decency when you pick up the phone if you're working that government agency and you have to answer the call please have the decency to wait like about a nice one minute at least a nice minute or two would be nice having somebody waited for like an hour or something to talk to someone because you know if for some reason they put their phone down or they're just about to get back to a line or something you know i call somebody today just like the fucking dumbass uber drivers couple of times that i ran into you know this the fucking money sucker is just he's just literally comes to the gas station you know he puts you know he's waiting for a two minute timer to go off and a two time two minute timer went off he's just driving away and I see him and he sees me too and I shake my hand at him and he's very feels very desensitized, you know, very <coughs> <coughs> comfortable telling me that well the two minutes is over, you know, I, I was waiting for two minutes, sorry, I have to cancel. Yeah, well, you know, you, you have a phone there, you have a text message, and couldn't you call me, text me some shit, maybe do a little loop around the goddamn fucking gas station, some shit, moving your butt a little bit, making some kind of a attempt to try to find me? No, why well, would I want to do that? I just made five bucks in a matter of two minutes. That it would be very stupid to do that. What, do you think uh, I should have a sense of humanity or care about some puppy? Some kind of a altruistic behavior? Sorry, bro, it's a fucking America, okay? I don't know where you're coming from. Well, no, bro. I know you people, man. It has nothing to do with America. But it's what I do know, you know. It can just happen to you. And I know it doesn't feel sweet to you either. Moving on. Yeah. Um, I say that. No, please, man. You know, when you, pick up the, when you pick up the phone, you see nobody's there. Please wait one minute, two minutes, you know. Maybe they will come back and... They don't have to go through a heck of a hassle trying to call you back me for another hour being on the line, missing you again, putting the work off again. And it's not easy to wait, put a time aside from your life trying to call somebody for an hour or something, you know. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> it's not okay. You have created this system where people have to be on hold just because of the fucking government. You feel like, you know, they need you and they're willing to pay you whatever money and sh shut their mouth and not do anything about it. And... Or better said, not much they can do about it. You know, just like I was telling this uh, immigration 
funny is that the, you know this immigration here man I, I call them they have a callback uh, um, um, uh, system it's too long basically sometimes says it's about one hour one hour 20 minutes one hour of 30 minutes I think one time it told me one hour and 80 minutes like three hours that's what it is I mean excuse me 180 minutes that's what it was so 120 minutes, 100 minutes, 120 minutes, 130 minutes, 180 minutes. I was like, whoa, so somebody got back, get back to me in three hours. But one thing they do is that uh, when they stitch you up is that they try calling you again like twice. Like if you miss one call, they try calling you, which is not too bad. What it is bad about it is that the other day, like I was calling and uh, I, some, sometimes they do this when you call them. They tell you that the, high, the call volume is so much, they just can't answer your call. So they won't even put you on the waiting list on hold so they will call you back. And I told to the woman, I'm just trying to use humor to explain my resentment. I said, I said, oh, okay, that's so cool. But when I want to pay the money for my application, and they would always be ready to take my money, right? To accept my payment, right? And she said, well, I don't set the rules here, sir. Yeah, I know you don't set the rules, but it seems like uh, you really don't uh, mind it either, you know, because, you know, who cares? You're getting paid there, right? I guess. I'm not sure. I guess that's the concept. <coughs> <coughs> well, I hate to blame people for something that they have no really uh, nothing to do with it, but, you know, if I'm working in some place, you know, I would you know, have the balls to stand up for myself, at least, you know, and try to make something happen, you know what I'm saying, I won't just take some shit just the way they, they throw it at me, um, I don't, I don't care if that means they're gonna fire me or some shit, or let me go or some crap, no, I've never done it, that's why I have so much of find hard time finding a job, you know, uh, how do you say that? Because these like people, the second they look at my face, they feel like shit. This motherfucker doesn't take shit from nobody. That is, I'm not necessarily, you know, violent or not aggressive. It's just, it's just that I'm very frank and forward. If somebody I feel like they're trying to be a jerk, I would be very quick to point it out and tell them, hey, excuse me, I'm not going to do that. I'm not doing that. Excuse me, not to me. You know, if you want to do it to somebody else, I'm too busy to care for that. But not to me. <coughs> you know. <coughs> <coughs> and apparently they just feel like, you know what, uh, if this motherfucker, we, we want to go with him. I don't know what, okay, that's another story, but yeah. No, they just don't like it. Alright, so, uh, shit, I gotta go get some sleep. Um, yeah, I'm actually... You know, as robotic that I've become, uh, I need some sleep too. So let's uh, get some fucking sleep and... Uh, yo, my man, this is serious another thing, man. I know how many times I have to say this. Uh, there's no need to say this, man. And, uh, shit, but this is serious, man. You know, you need to let these guns go, man. These guns, man, they have no usage. Um, I I want to say one thing. I hope maybe this makes sense. You know, three hundred years ago, with this uh, divine uh, document you're referring to as the uh, Constitution, American Constitution, and yeah, this bullcrap you're referring to. You know, back then when they made this shit up, uh, when they said. Uh, all men are created equal you know this concept right they really meant and they felt that everybody realizes but that really they in parentheses and code they really mean white person property owner man 21 years age and older you know that concept right so really the reason they wanted the citizens that is to bear arms was really to give him the protection they needed so that is if their property, the massive number of slaves they had, or whoever somehow was a threat to their, um, basically to their profit-making machines and their means of production was, 
they can just yeah using what's called this ultimate killing machine gun they can just shut them off and avoid any kind of uh, rebellion or any problem the same stood if you were a white person who was in a indentured servitude you had to serve your time more or less like a slave till you qualify and you could buy yourself out of your servitude and then you would be free person and then you can go about your business of becoming one of them and now fucking perhaps getting yourself uh, some property so this concept was not really a universal thing it was not meant to for for everybody and uh, certainly the idea was not to take down the government or anything no that was not the idea to take to to avoid dictatorship and that's kind of a, a bull crap you know uh, that was not the idea um, what kind of a government uh, are we talking about the government that actually creates uh, barriers here between us which as it was back then so was it a dictatorship back then and nobody objected to it and now it's not a dictatorship and back then if not everybody had a gun but now it's not a dictatorship but everybody does have a gun excuse me you did the math so please if you want to fool yourself don't try to fool anybody else these uh, stupid things need to go away. <coughs> <coughs> you know, you talk to a white dude. He says, well, you know, all these niggers and criminals and bullshit, they have guns and so forth, so we have to protect them. You talk to a black man and says, well, these Europeans, uh, these white, white people, they're, they're trying to, you know, to el- eradicate us and so forth, and we need to have guns to protect ourselves. Oh man, that is not what you need. You don't need a variable in your life to protect yourself. What you need is a solid asset that will prevail no matter what. Okay? You know, and for the love of God, uh, how do you say that? You know, the guns per se, I don't need to go through this argument. No, I'm just saying, you know, you need an ammunition, what you call it, you know. You, the gun by itself doesn't have the. What I'm saying, you need really a consistent flow of a supply. You know, you want to fight your government off. Have you ever thought of this one part, man? What if your government all of a sudden goes into business saying that, you know what? I'm sorry, no more fucking sale of uh, guns and ammunition because, you know, come on, man. Come on. You know, how much far you want to go with these guns? How much you think you can perhaps... Yes, it will be glorious, goddamn, if that's what you're doing. I'm not sure what is your concept of di- dictatorship, man. But this country has way far long time ago has crisscrossed that definition of goddamn fucking what you may call and refer to as dictatorship, man. Um, certainly on an international level. You know. Did you know that? When I'm speaking of that, did you know that... Uh, you know, when they wanted to do the whole Louisiana purchase and certainly going as far as perhaps uh, taking over Texas and then going to the war with Mexico further, Mexico further to try to take over the the California and the up, you know those lands that were owned by Mexico. Did you know that actually this whole fucking damn shit that you're referring to, um, the Constitution, did not permit that kind of advancement in land and acquisition of further lands and trying to break further frontiers it was really said nothing but purely that the country and the frontier should be limited to the 13 state of colonies Uh, well uh, at the you know you know the 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 pre-defined the pre-established 13 states as we are now do you know that so what is this constitution? Who are you trying to fool? Whenever it's on your side, or supposedly you can declare it on your side, you try to buy, swear by it and hail it as a divine piece of crap. But whenever it's not really on your thing, you're very quick and it's like, huh? <laughs> school me. I'm sorry, we don't know what you're talking about. Unless you can fight yourself, sir, and you can prove it. 
and you can fight by that proof. I'm sorry, we don't have this kind of thing. It doesn't exist. If you can't fight for it, it does not exist. Yeah, I get that concept. Okay, I'm familiar with that shit. Alright, thank you very much. Anyways, um... So, how do you say that? Putting all these craps aside, man. Hey, man, this bullshit, man. You know, what you need to fight somebody is not a goddamn fucking gun. It's not a money. It's a brain power that enables you education. What's called human capital. That is what you need to fight somebody off. If that's what you try to one day do. People can't take away your guns. They can take away your wealth. But one thing they can't take away from you is what you have in your fucking mind. So, so long you're alive. Trust me, even if you're locked up, you have the ability to somehow do something about it. If you want to do something about it. You know? I mean, uh, how do you say that? Um, oh man, we gotta stop doing these guns, man. These guns are crazy shit, man. You know, I mean... Not my words. Not my words. I've read this thing so many times by the Americans. They say, well, you know what? The reason why whenever they talk to somebody, they try not to be argumentative about something is that they feel like maybe if they go too far and they say something really against somebody, yeah, purely form of dictatorship that is, hey, man, I don't care. You know what I'm trying to say? I don't care who is really taking your freedom of speech away. Is it government or this whole fucking gun you, you, you believe in you deem somebody else is carrying? So, yeah. Obviously, you don't have a freedom of speech. I feel like, no, we don't want to argue with nobody because what if, what if he has a gun on him? And he pulls the fucking shit on me. You know? So, yeah, man, whatever you say, man. You're cool, man. We're cool. Yeah, we, yeah, just what you said, man. Yeah, I know, man. I have to educate myself further. You know? No, you know, I've been a victim of this goddamn uh, gun shit uh, and many other things. I don't, I don't, <coughs> <coughs> you don't need guns, man. Please, man, this, this, this mentality, you know, this is a total killing machine. You know what is really a killing machine? You're so right about it. Uh, this is what I'm trying to say. You've been programmed so badly. It's not a goddamn gun. You're so right about it. The gun doesn't kill nobody, per se. Yes, if that's how you strongly want to relate to this concept. Yes, I know that. What does kill you is your brain being born into the system and programmed enough that you'll feel so desensitized and feel so liberal and rightful to try to utilize it if you deem a danger and threat from somebody. This is what is goddamn fucking problem. And you already possess this dangerous factor inside yourself as an American person. No, really, this is serious. I've been a victim of this goddamn shit, man. I don't. I want to. I don't want to rehearse the, my story and what happened to me. I'm sure everybody has a story. Speaking of the 54 uh, hostages the Iranians uh, held for that fucking thing. You went so strong with this whole propaganda machine of going against this whole fucking nation of uh, 30 million people and impoverishing them and 